Hello and bienvenue listeners. Welcome to Shine in Provence. I'm your host, Crudy, and you have arrived at the place where you get to hear me speak with those who have taken the leap to move to the south of France, whether for work, love, school, retirement, or sheer madness. I ask them frankly how they not only survive, but shine here in Provence. And guess what? It's all in English. Ne quittez pas. Love, can you please take this picture again? But this time I'm holding a glass of red wine and make sure the sunlight doesn't get in the way. Okay? Okay. Cheese! When in Provence, it's hard not to take photos. There are gorgeous fields full of lavenders, sunflowers, poppies and whatnot, as well as fantastic wine, cheese and sexy French men and women within reach. You may not be able to find an Uber as easily, but you know you can get a nice bottle of red while waiting for your ride to pick you up. However, Provence is so much more than that. For those of you who have made the jump or who are thinking of moving here, today I launch our first episode where I talk about a totally different side of Provence that may show you why so many people want to call this place their home, not just for the present, but for their future generations as well. Let me guess. Is it art? No. Learning French? Mm, nope. Then what? It's science. That may not be the first thing that jumps to your mind when you think Provence, but it's a gigantic part of this region's economic and cultural landscape that elevates its quality of living, which is one of the biggest pulls of this region in the first place. The south of France entices a lot of us with the sun, but for the expats and French pats that are here, science is a part of their daily life that makes living here possible, sustainable, and of quality. One way that really represents this is the well-known science fair or Fête de la Science in French, which has been celebrated in France every year since 1991. Not only is it highly celebrated, but science and its way of thinking is instilled in the French culture that sets it apart from others. Today, I talk to the people that put science on the map right here in Provence. I speak with Agathe Maté, the regional coordinator for Fête de la Science in Provence, Laban Koblenz, the head of communications at ITER, the science experiment here, Romain Bourges, the IT policy responsible officer at ITER, who has been volunteering at the Fête de la Science in Manosque for many years. And last but not the least, Maxime, a 10-year-old science lover who will finally validate whether or not all these big organizations have achieved their goals. If you have bared with me this far, you won't be disappointed with what the rest have to say. Stay tuned. Hello, Agath. It's very nice to be here with you on this online interview. You're coming from Marseille, aren't you? Yeah. Hello, Kruti. Uh, yeah, I am. Um, I work in Marseille. I, I was also born in Marseille and uh, I'm very glad I'm able to work in the city I love and I was uh, born in. So, Same here. Well, thank you so much for joining in. So if I can jump straight in as the coordinator for Fête de la Science regionally, can you tell us really what is the significance of Fête de la Science for France? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for... Um, talking about this event because I think it's very important. Uh, you said it like nationally, but also regionally. And the idea is to to show and to uh, make it more less dramatic, like to show people that they actually can empower themselves with science by understanding uh, how it's made. And um, I would say it's uh, also a democratic issue, actually. Uh, so, yeah, it's a very, very important uh, manifestation in my eyes and in my opinion. Also, uh, after the crisis, we, we knew with COVID and um, 
what's about to happen also with climate change, with the uh, energy crisis. Uh, so yeah. it's very important that people know they can act, they can ask also. They have the right to ask what is being made with that, with uh, science. It's also a matter of uh, public uh, money. And uh, so it's really, really great to, to have this moment to meet each other. So, And if I can ask you now, why is it also important for big research institutes, universities and museums that are around here, such as ITER, CEA, INRE, MUSEM, all of these, to participate every year with Fête de la Science? Mm. Um, I would say it, it's in two d different d directions that uh, it's very important for them. Um, it's very important for them so that they can show what they do, actually. Um, it's also one of their missions uh, to give back to the public and to be transparent about what they do. Um, so, uh, so yeah, they can. It's a moment where they can explain what they do, and uh, not educate people, but uh, because it's very important. It's not like a matter of education. The Fête de la Science is a fête. It's festive. Um, education is a really, really great matter and very important. But it's not this time of the year you do that. No, you, you make it fun, uh, you're being curious, you um, ask the question you wouldn't ask uh, at another time of the year. And uh, les, the, um, you talked about INRAE, for example, uh, they make themselves uh, uh, available to answer uh, the question and they go uh, and see the people. Uh, in public spaces, for example, you have a lot of Festival des Sciences and Village des Sciences in the region. Uh, for instance, in, in Marseille, in Manosque, Avignon, Nice. You have like 26 Village des Sciences in the region uh, this year. So wow. everywhere you can ask a scientist the question you have. And I, I, love, I love what you have just said, that for you it's important <laughs> that the people know that it's not really a school. Yeah. but rather a place of real conversations yeah. and celebration of science and progress in the yeah. country. Uh, exactly. And the second way I think it's important for them, like, uh, like you said, like in CERM, uh, in RAE, ITER, uh, or MUSEM, uh, it's also useful for them. I mean, to explain what you do, and uh, to uh, meet people that doesn't have that don't have um, the same uh, the same culture uh, of work than you, it can be very useful for you even in your researches. I mean, when uh, I organized the Festival de Marseille, uh, mm -hmm. Festival des Sciences de Marseille, I think of it as itself a laboratory of uh, of uh, methodologies. Like for example, if you meet uh, if, if a biologist meets with an artist it's great i mean they can exchange they uh, they can realize they ask exactly the same questions just they don't answer it the same in the same way and but the methodologies can be like um complementary for each other yeah and to see that and to allow this to happen i think it's very very i enjoy it so much like uh, this is a great work and that would <laughs> that would create a unique point of view for both of yeah. them the biologist yeah. and the artist through this creative connection that you have yeah. provided yeah, yeah. I, I try to see it like that and i think if even a little bit it works it's just great and yeah. my goal is like fulfilled <laughs> wow i love that so much thank you i guess so much for taking the time and talking with me thank you it was great up next i speak with laban koblitz the communications director at eater which for those of you who don't know is arguably one of the largest scientific experiments in the world based right here in Provence. The size and significance of this project has been widely compared to others such as CERN in Switzerland. All right, so 
if I can ask you directly, why is it important for Eater to participate in Fête de la Science, especially here in Provence region? So I think that, that local outreach and outreach in general is is core in the ITER mission. Um, we're doing the most complex science experiment, arguably, in human history. And so to have that relatively unknown is, in the first place, a bit absurd. We want people to know. Secondly, in the specific region here in Provence, Having the local population understand more about what a uh, what a treasure we have, what a huge human accomplishment is is in process here, and also the challenges that are associated, has three real benefits. One, um, pride. It is a source of of local pride, and we find that the more we do outreach the more uh, that pride shows. It shows in media, it shows in uh, people wanting to visit the site, and so Fête de la Science is an amazing vehicle for that. Secondly, um, there is a great deal of economic benefit that comes from having some, a, a facility like this in the region. There are a lot of local companies involved. There are a lot of opportunities where the efficiency of, of interaction with the local authorities, et cetera, can really, really help the project to be um, to be to, to be optimized, and so from that standpoint, Fetalicios is again a, a vehicle for raising that sort of awareness. And the third one might be the best, which is to inspire young people to understand what fusion energy offers as a possibility for for them at a future date for their kids, for their grandchildren, for future generations, and to inspire them possibly into careers that will be um, their future and that will be their own chance to make a difference in the way that we try to do here at ETER. Speaking about inspiring the young generation, how do you actually educate them as well about nuclear fusion apart from Fête de la Science? There are a lot of things we do. I, I wish we could do more. I would say probably the most coherent effort that we do is uh, an effort we started uh, about two years ago to try to gather from all over the world, from different fusion R&D organizations, uh, private sector initiatives, NGOs, governmental, intergovernmental facilities. We tried to gather the educational material that existed now. And uh, we put that together on uh, a site, on the ETER website. We call it Infused, the International Fusion Education Program. Um, it's really just a collection of materials at this point. We think that it can be expanded to be more of a program. But what it means is that if you go to the location on our website, it is a resource for students, for teachers, even for members of the general public who want to learn more. It can be books, it can be posters, it can be uh, do-it-yourself experiments, how to 3D print your own tokamak model, many, many different aspects, and in multiple languages, so you can sort and, and really get to it. Now that's, I said, the most coherent effort, but we also uh, interact with Agence Eater France to do school visits. They bring quite a lot of school kids here. Uh, we give tons of external talks, um, sometimes that comes with a virtual tour, which we can do for schools. But the most important thing there is that this can much of this can be done remotely. So it does not take a lot of resources. It's things that a, a school teacher in Paris or, a, 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 say, a wealthy suburb of Paris or the most remote school that has Internet in Tanzania can all come in and, and get those resources. And again, use that to educate kids and to inspire them to, uh, to join the fusion race. Now, moving on to Romain Bourge, the IT security and policy responsible officer at ITER to find out what it's like to be a volunteer on the field at the Fête de la Science in Manosque. All right, so hello, Roma. Thank you so much for taking the time to have this interview with me. I would like to jump straight into the question. So as someone who works in ITER and has been on the ground promoting La Fête de la Science for four years, 
and with the association, if I'm saying it correctly, Les Petits Débrouillards, <laughs> right? <laughs> Good, in Manosque. Do you see, first of all, hands-on, the difference that this festival makes to the families and children of both the local people and the expats and the eater families that come to this science fair? And if so, in what way? Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Uh, well, I think La Fête de la Science is really a unique opportunity for thousands of people to find in one place all the actors of the scientific community um, and the related company gathered for them uh, to explain and show what they are doing. I mean, it's not often that you can enter IDA or CA or Sanofi for a visit. Uh, the access is highly restricted. And there at La Fête de la Science, you have them all in one place to explain what we are doing. Um, I mean, for us it's, it's it's also a unique opportunity to reach out to many schools, children, families, not only families from the ITER organization, but all, all the families in the area and take a bit of time to explain them what we are doing in ITER. Um, they all heard about us, but not all of them knows exactly what we are building and how it's important for the future of humanity. Yeah, totally. Um, I know that as well, first off, that it's not always easy to enter, but it's nice that you guys are able to come out and meet the others on the ground. Um, so for you, since you have been, as we said, at the FET for a while, from your point of view, what are what are the people that come in, especially the students? What are they most interested in learning at the FET when they come s directly to your stand? Uh, well, it's uh, it's it's not straight directly interested in the project. I would say uh, over the four years we've been doing this, I think what attracts most people when they see the stand uh, are the plasma bubbles that we have. They are glass spheres where you have uh, kind of mini thunderstorms uh, happening in there and the children, they come and start playing with them. And then only then they start asking questions about what they see, what they feel and how it's related to, to it. It's really a, a scientific approach that I like. It's, it's first, it's like learning by doing, you know, uh, so uh, you see them playing with this and then they, 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 it's this spark of their interest basically. Oh, wow. So it's like a and fun, I, yeah. Yeah. And Sorry. after, uh, after we spend like 10, 15 minutes, uh, I explained them how incredible this machine is, uh, by, by its size, by the way it will work, uh, by recreating a, a mini sun, uh, on earth. And, and you, re you really can see in the eyes of the children, this is really what what I like with this is that you can see that, that they love what they see and they, they, they just realizing slowly how big and fantastic this project is. And finally, I speak with one of the sweetest kids out there who is definitely wiser than his ears. Hello, my name is Maxim. I am 10 years old. I go to the international school in our town. In Manosque. When was the first time that you visited the Fête de la Science and why did you go there? My teacher organized a visit, so we go, got there. I There were ma many different stands and people who explained the experiments. I liked the part when we visited the stand with the plasma ball. I liked it because I learned a little bit about plasma. When you touch the plasma ball with your finger, lightning appears. Wow, and why was that your favorite? Why did you like to see that? It was the first time I learned about plasma. It was something new, and I like new things. And do you like science class in general? Yes. I have a special teacher uh, about science in school, and she's funny. She... she like, uh, she says that she'll make everything explode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And do you think that when you visit this Fête de la Science, this one especially that you will go to and that you have been to, do you think that it's good for you in your present or for your future? Uh, yes. 
It was the first time I, s- I saw and learned about plasma. And I like discovering new things and finding out how they work. No, but why do you think going to this Fête de la Science is good for you? Do you think about that? Do you think you, when you learn new things, why is that good for you today or when you will be older? Mm. When I get older, if ether uh, is... Uh, will work then I'll be in the bigger factory for the energy <laughs> so th- about plasma I need to learn more about it it's because when you grow up you want to work in ether uh, not in ether because uh, well, I think the ether will finish but ether is just to look if it works the energy with plasma And then there'll be a, maybe a new factory if it, if it works. And then you're going to be the one helping to make that happen. Yes. Tell me, if you could do, if you could be anything in the future, if there was no limitation, if you could be anything in the world in the future, would it be what you just said to work in the new factory at Eater? What would it be? Yes, I would like to be an engineer there. Like my dad. As you've heard, Provence is more than just a place for wine and dine. But hold up, it's still got all that and more. It's time for... What's happening, Provence? Find out what events are happening in and around your region. I'm starting with Fête de la Science, of course, as it's happening all over the country. Here are the dates for a few hot spots in the Provence region where it is open all day to the public. Quick disclaimer though, the locations are in French, so please excuse my French, I mean my accent. All right, Nice, 15 and 16 October at Jardin Albert, Marseille, 15 and 16 October at Esplanade de la Mairie, Aix-en-Provence, 8 and 9 October, Parc Saint-Mitre, Manosque, 8 October at MJC, near the post office, Avignon, 8 October, downtown at Place de l'Horloge. For other cities and towns, head on to www.fetelacience.org to find out where and when you can go with your family and friends. Meanwhile, check out these other ongoing events that are happening around town. First, an art exhibition in Arles called Head, Kisses and Battle, running every day until the 23rd of October at Foundation Vincent van Gogh, 35 Rue du Docteur Fanton. It's placing over 70 paintings and drawings by leading American and European 20th century artists around town. It's 10 euros for adults and free for 18 and under. Then there's Fête de la Chantagne, or Chestnut Festival. It's on the 16th, 23rd, and 30th of October, which falls on Sundays, at the Var village of Colobrius. The Var considers itself as the chestnut capital of the world, where you can taste and buy all kinds of chestnuts, roasted preserves, paste, cakes, and whatnot, all to be washed away with the newly arrived wine of the year. Speaking of wine, there is also the Fête des Vendanges in the town of Pierre-Vert in Alpes de haute provence It's a fun day out with your family. The first press of grapes make for beautiful sweet wine. There's going to be music and food vendors all around for everyone to enjoy. You can stroll around this beautiful area tasting some amazing local wines from the first harvest. It falls on the 22nd October from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Entry is free. And last but not least, there is the Avignon Blues Rock Festival in the town of, forgive my pronunciation, Chateau Renard, on the outskirts of Avignon. They have French and international music acts for all, along with five other concerts, exhibitions, and a film screening. That is taking place Sunday, October 23rd from 9 p.m. onwards. And with that, thank you for listening with me. If you missed some parts of this episode and would like to hear it again, 
You can find this show and more interviews on the radio's website, as well as your favorite podcast channels, YouTube, and www.shineandprovence.com. Don't forget to subscribe. Catch me again same time next month. A bientôt! Thank you.